You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at bbmglobalnetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Motivational Catholic speaker and life coach from New Jersey is here. He's a former emergency room psychiatric counselor with 30 years of experience in helping others to find hope, motivation, and inspiration. Now, please welcome the host of Monday Morning Motivation, Jimmy Green. Good morning, good morning, good Monday morning. Welcome to Monday Morning Motivation with Jimmy Green. I'm your host, Jimmy Green. And we're coming to you live on Bold Brave TV. So welcome back. Uh, it's been a great uh, week. I just wanted to uh, welcome everyone to the show. And I want to just give a little uh, idea what we're going to talk about today. Uh, been praying a lot lately over uh, the anniversary of 9-11. I uh, want to talk about leadership and uh, what that's all about, uh, especially in specifically in regard to when you think about back to that day on 9-11, people were leaders, but then there were people who really, you know, had to step up. And uh, one of the reasons this topic uh, resonates uh, so much with me in regards to uh, 9-11 is because, you know, I live very close by to where all that took place 20 years ago. And I was just over there yesterday at uh, Ground Zero uh, visiting uh, some of the sites and seeing the... Uh, people going going uh, get through the names and so forth. So that was a very inspiring thing to do. Uh, one of the reasons that, uh, again, 9-11 resonates with me is because of these uh, four people right here. Uh, my dad and my dad is uh, here. And uh, my other three uncles were all firemen in Hoboken, New Jersey. And uh, I grew up in and around a lot of uh, firemen and policemen. And uh, they were leaders in their own right. Uh, three uh, of them uh, served in the Army, one in the Navy. Uh, I looked up to them and to the men that they exposed uh, uh, me to as, as a young, young boy growing up, uh, police and firemen. Uh, every year we would have uh, what they call a communion breakfast. And typically that would be at our church, Our Lady of Grace in Hoboken. And they'd have a, a, a speaker and... Uh, the, the firemen and the policemen would all get together uh, once a year um, on that occasion. And I learned a lot from those uh, men and women. And one, I, one of the things I admired most about them was their, uh, the fact that they run towards the danger when everyone else is running away. And uh, that's what leaders do. And so today I'm going to talk about uh, leadership and uh one one of the, my favorite quotes about uh, leadership as we start the show is a leader, a true leader is one who who knows the way, who shows the way and goes the way. Let me say that again. A, a true leader is one who knows the way, who uh, goes the way and shows the way. Uh, just an example from my own life. Uh, when I was a manager, when I eventually became a manager in uh, psychiatric emergency services, one of the things I promised to myself as as a leader, uh, my style of leadership uh, was more servant leadership, where uh, I wanted to serve the people that were uh, in in my care under I don't want to say underneath me, but uh, those who I managed. And one of the main things that I learned about leadership is that. I never wanted to, I never asked anybody to do something I didn't, wasn't willing to do myself. And I hope my colleagues, uh, you know, perhaps can recall that. Um, so a leader is one who knows the way, goes the way and shows the way. Now, 
in regards to perhaps 9-11, let's think back a little bit. Who were some of the people that emerged that day? Well, certainly Rudy Giuliani, the mayor of the city at the time, uh, had a tremendous amount of pressure immediately put, put on him uh, to, to make decisions that were life and death decisions, you know? And so that's, takes a lot of motivation and a lot of uh, uh, quick thinking, thinking on your feet. Uh, Bernie Carrick, the uh, uh, police, I believe it was the police chief at the time, closing down the city. Things that had to be done by leaders who had to really step up that day. The men and women, the policemen, the firemen, the first responders, even the people, uh, the civilians had to become leaders that day as well. And uh, and so I, I remember them. Uh, one of the things I, uh, persons that I admire a lot is a priest that, uh, his name is Father Michael Judge. It's a book I picked up yesterday. It's called The... Uh, the Book of Michael, The Surprising Life and Heroic Death of Father Michael Judge. Uh, he was a Franciscan priest. He was the chaplain of the NYFD, uh, New York Fire Department. And uh, I was just reading a little bit last night, and he could very well have uh, withdrew from the scene. In fact, when he was talking to Mayor Giuliani, Mayor said, you know, maybe you should uh, leave the scene. And Father Michael Judge being a a true leader stepped up and said, no, I, I have to be with my men. And uh, subsequent to that, he was administering to people in and around the area that day. And uh, he apparently uh, suffered a heart attack during it. So there was a lot of you know stress during that time. But I admire the fact that he, he too ran towards the danger when most everyone else was running away. And so uh, I'm going to share more about that book uh, in, a, in a future show. But Father Michael Judge actually uh, was stationed before he went to New York. He was uh, stationed in a, a church nearby here named St. Joe's Church in East Rutherford. And uh, there was a story there where uh, there was a, a, an incident where he was called upon by the police department because they couldn't get through to a uh, a husband uh, that was having a difficult situation, a domestic uh, situation uh, with his wife. As the story goes, as I was told, uh, the police called him and said, Father, we need your uh, help. Uh, we have a man that's uh, threatening to uh, to harm his wife. And so uh, in uh, true leader fashion, Father Michael uh, apparently uh, went to the home. They uh, apparently had to put up a ladder uh, to the second floor of the uh, place uh, that he uh, responded to. And uh, here, if you know, Franciscans wear a, a long uh, brown robe, and he had to apparently uh, lift his robe to climb the ladder to uh, talk the gentleman out of uh, doing something uh, awful that day. And so that's a leader. He he knew the way, he went the way, and he showed the way. Uh, so that's what... Um, I admire about uh, Father Michael, uh, Michael Judge, and all those men, women, uh, who are our first responders. So I wanted to give a shout out to them today. Obviously, it's a day that none of us will ever forget, and yet there, I think there's a lot of lessons to be learned. Unfortunately, out of tragedy, uh, oftentimes uh, some positive things can come out of it. Uh, if you recall, after 9/11, there was a lot of emotions uh, going throughout the country and the world, really. Uh, part particularly one of them was uh, the unity that we saw, the uh, the ability to reach out and help someone regardless of uh, race, color, creed, no creed, ethnicity. Uh, there was a unity that uh, that uh, took over our, our, our nation as a result of, of that tragedy. As I've said before on the show, uh, oftentimes, our biggest breakdowns in life can become our biggest breakthroughs. And uh, certainly on a, on a day like that, a lot of people could have just broke down and uh, stayed there. But we, we continue to, to fight forward. I hope we continue to learn that lesson. I've been praying over that a lot, the need for unity amongst us. It's a, such a key point of leadership is being able to unify 
the team and uh, as as a people, unity is going to be a key. I, I feel through my uh, recent uh, prayers and reflection o- over the last uh, of a few months and, and weeks. Um, also like to uh, talk a little bit today about uh, football. Football fever is back. Football is back. Last week, I'm sorry about last week. I forgot it was Labor Day. Uh, I was going to talk about the uh, the fight in Irish, uh, my team there. They had a, a win over Florida State and uh, was uh, uh, good to have uh, football back, uh, people in the stadiums uh, uh, coming to coming out and living living life. And uh, it's 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 interesting as a former football player to to hear the crowd roar again. Uh, as a player, I mean, it's, I guess there's nothing uh, that can compare to to that when a whole group of people is is united. You know, we all we all have different teams, you know, but. At the end of the day, we shake hands, win, lose, draw, whatever. Uh, and that's the, the greatness about uh, America, I think, is that the, even in 9-11, if you think back, you know, baseball really galvanized us as a nation. You know, the Yankees, I think, were in the World Series at, at that time. And uh, uh, people knew that we, although we had been hit very hard, we had to, we had to move forward and, uh, and continue each day to fight as we do today. Uh, so... Uh, Anyone who wants to perhaps talk about some football today, I'm open to that as well. Um, what else did I want to talk about today? Uh, let's see here. Uh, again, just the, the whole idea of, uh, you know, like I said, this show is about motivation and inspiration. It's about self-help. It's about uh, personal growth. As we go forward, there's some other topics that I'll bring to the fore as well. Um, thinking of, uh, you know, I'll talk more about it at the end of the show, but there's some other books that I'd like to review for you. Uh, one typically uh, that I, I love because I love small books. I can't, I can't read uh, with ADD. I, I don't do well with uh, big books. But uh, one, of the, one of the books that I want to review in the future is, is uh, Happiness is an Inside Job by uh, uh, John Powell, SJ. He was a Jesuit priest. And I'll be talking about that more in another show. But the basic premise of that book is that uh, happiness is, is and always has been an inside job. To the extent that we reach outside ourselves, we look for the money, the fame, uh, the, the accolades, the, the cars, the homes, all these things that we think are going to make us happy really don't amount to that. So it's to, that, to the extent that we reach outside ourselves for happiness is to that same extent, he says, that we are uh, doomed uh, to failure. So H equals IJ, excuse me, happiness uh, is an inside job. And we'll talk about that uh, in the future as well. I'd like to hear from you too. The, the number to call the show is 86. Number to call the show is 866-451-1451. You're listening to Monday Morning Motivation with Jimmy Green on Bold Brave TV. And uh, we'll be right back on the other side of the break. What if there were a super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair? What if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against Parkinson's disease? Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to Easy easysense.com and learn how with your help we can fight these horrific brain disorders that's easysense.com to learn more and help support the broderick foundation author radio show host and coach john m hawkins reveals strategies to help gain perspective build confidence find clarity achieve goals john m hawkins new book Coached to Greatness, unlock your full potential with limitless growth. Published by iUniverse, Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. 
Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them, rediscover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Hey, welcome back to Monday Morning Motivation with Jimmy Green. I'm your host, Jimmy Green. We're coming to you live on Bold Brave TV. So uh, today we're uh, discussing uh, leadership and what it what it means to be a leader. Uh, I think uh, some of the qualities that uh, leaders have. Think of some of the, you know, the great leaders, uh, you know, in history. Again, as I said in the in the first segment, a leader is one who knows the way, goes the way, and and shows the way. So. Uh, the number to call the show is 866-451-1451. I'd like to hear from you, see if you have any thoughts on on leadership, uh, who are some of the best leaders that that you thought of over time. Uh, one of the uh, some of the qualities of, of leaders, leadership are, I guess, uh, you know, being able to serve the people that are un, under us. And I don't mean that to say under us. I, I don't know if there's a better way to to say it, but when one comes into a leadership role, I was listening to John Maxwell this morning, one of my uh, other favorite motivational speakers, John Maxwell. He writes these uh, little little books, motivational books, and he was talking about leadership, and uh, he was talking about servant leadership. And sometimes when we get a title, let's say manager or CEO or uh, captain, whatever it might be. Uh, the assumption sometimes is that people will just automatically follow us uh, because we have a, a title. And he went on to say that that's not necessarily the case. Uh, people don't follow what what we say necessarily. They follow more what, what we do. And so, again, it's action. Our actions speak louder than words. Uh, and so uh, think think about it this. I've never been in battle, but I would, if I were in, in ever in battle, I would want to have a leader who uh, was confident, someone who I could trust, uh, someone who, who was battle tested and, and knew what he was doing out there. Uh, and someone who, again, was not, not going to ask me to do something that he would he or she would not necessarily uh, do themselves. And so uh, trust trust is a big thing thing too with leadership. If people, if I'm the leader and, and people uh, that are, I'm asking to follow me can't trust me, uh, they're gonna have a lot of difficult, I'm gonna have a lot of difficulty uh, getting those people to uh, follow, follow my lead. So again, as I say, m- most of the time, uh, people look at what we do and not what we say. And I always, uh, you know, I have examples and I'm not saying I'm, I'm not trying to pat myself on the back, but to give an example, when I worked in the emergency room, uh, I worked, as you know, in uh, psychiatric emergency services for almost 30 years. And invariably, there would be days that were not busy for whatever reason. And then there were days where we would say, uh, my colleagues and I would say we, we were getting slammed. Uh, and when I uh, became a manager, uh, some people used to fault me for doing this, but let's say it was my time to leave at the end of the day. Let's, I don't know, five o'clock. And uh, we were getting slammed that day. And usually it would be one counselor coming in for the next shift. And I always felt it uh, difficult, let's say, if there were five people in the emergency room, six people in the emergency room, to just walk out and say, see you later, I'm the manager, bye-bye. Uh, I had a difficulty with that. And so a lot of times it, my wife would get upset. I'd be getting home late a lot. But uh, we would, I would generally say, hey, you take three, I'll take three patients, and uh, we'll meet in the middle. And uh, as I say, teamwork is uh, part of being a leader as well, Be- being a team player. Uh, it's not that, you know, I often say team stands for together, everyone achieves more. And in what we're talking about today in leadership and 
the aftermath of 9-11, think about the, the, the 9-12 effect, you know, how everybody came to, together and, and, and helped one another. Uh, so as a leader, you want to be a, 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 try to be a team player and not, not just uh, say, hey, I'm the, I'm the, I have the title, as uh, John Maxwell was talking about this morning. So that means you're, you have to follow me. Uh, that's not always uh, the case. So servant leadership is being able to uh, have a plan of action, a good plan of action, what you, what you want to do, and uh, serve the people that are in your care better than saying they're, they're under me. I have a title, so they have to do, do as I say. They might do it. They might do it, but they might not necessarily want to do it. Well, that's one of the things that John... Maxwell was talking about it in leadership too, is a leader is one who can make people do things they don't necessarily want to do and like, like doing it. Uh, because things are difficult everywhere we go in life. And um, uh, so when you are, are in that type of a position, uh, for instance, in football, you know, I can, this is a funny story. There's accountability. You have to be accountable as a leader, right? So I have a, a quick, funny story. Coach Agresta will remember this one. Probably he may not, but I was at Hudson Catholic in uh, Jersey City, and I was one of the co-captains along with our quarterback, uh, Paul Chawanek, who was, who was a great leader as well. <clears throat> and uh, one day I got on the train in, uh, from Hoboken, my hometown, and I was going to Jersey City, and I said, oh, I'm running late. I'll take the train. I'll take the train. It'll get me there quicker. And I get on the train. I'm half asleep. Next thing you know, I hear Christopher Street, 9th Street. So here I am, a captain. I'm late for practice. Now I'm on 9th Street in New York City when I'm supposed to be in Jersey City, New Jersey. So I have to jump off the train, get on the next train, go back to New Jersey, get to Journal Square in Jersey City. Those of you who know Jersey City are familiar with it. I had a run from Journal Square to my high school, Hudson Catholic. When I got there, the only equipment on the racks was mine. And now I'm really sweating because I know Coach Greston and, and, and them are going to hold me accountable. And so uh, as the leader, I donned all my equipment, ran two miles to the, to the field where we, uh, where we used to practice called Lincoln Park in Jersey City. And when I got there, I got yelled at for being late because I was one of the captains. And it was a bad example for me to be late for practice. And so... Anyway, that's just a little story I had about, uh, you know, being accountable. I had to run a, another two miles after that. So you're listening to Monday Morning Motivation with Jimmy Green. I'm your host, Jimmy Green. Uh, the number to call is 866-451-1451. Love to hear from you. And uh, we're live here on Bold Brave TV. We'll be back on the other side of the break uh, talking about leadership. Did you know that your beliefs create your entire reality, but it's the subconscious beliefs that do most of the creating? Belief Shifter and Life Coach Shiraz can help you identify those limiting beliefs and eliminate them, often in a single session. Like it was almost instant, like I had relief right away. Creating better health, relationships, careers, and finances. Let Shiraz help you step out of safety and into awareness. Definitely something's happening. Uh, it's like a, a flow inside. Yeah, it feels good. Whether in person or online, Shiraz provides personal coaching, belief shifting. Visit Shiraz at energeticmagic.com or call 416 529 7429. Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Find your greater happiness. Be well, be aware, be magical. Are you struggling to care for elderly parents or a spouse? Do you wonder if being a caregiver is making you sick? Are you worried about taking time off work to care for elderly parents and balance work, life, and caregiving? Has caregiving become exhausting and emotionally draining? Are you an aging adult who wants to remain independent, but you're not sure how? I'm Pamela D. Wilson. Join me for the Caring Generation radio show for caregivers and aging adults, Wednesday evenings, 6 Pacific, 7 Mountain, 8 Central, and 9 Eastern, where I answer these questions and share tips for managing stress, family relationships, health, well-being, and more. Podcasts and transcripts of the Caring Generation are on my website, PamelaDWilson.com 
Mom, plus my caregiving library, online caregiver support programs, and programs for corporations interested in supporting working caregivers. Help, Hope, and Support for Caregivers is here on The Caring Generation and PamelaDWilson.com. morning welcome back to monday morning motivation with jimmy green i'm your host jimmy green we're coming to you live on bold brave tv today we're uh talking about leadership and we're talking about uh 9 11 the 20 year anniversary uh in addition to some football talk hopefully uh, if uh, anybody wants to call in the number to call is 866-451-1451 uh so what are some of the other things about leaders uh that that are important. Um, uh, character. Uh, one of my f- character counts is one of my favorite uh, uh, curriculum to recommend to people. Uh, that uh, I, uh, Mr. Joseph, the Josephson Institute, Michael Josephson, uh, uh, founded a, a program called Character Counts, and you can look him up at charactercounts.com or charactercounts.org and he talks about uh the 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 importance of honesty integrity accountability uh ethics big on ethics great stuff for teachers by the way uh i I love his stuff citizenship uh honesty integrity all of those qualities that that you look for uh in leaders and he that curriculum is in a lot of different schools and i hope i hope it gets to a lot more of them uh, I'd like to get him on the show, Mr. Josephson, one day and see if he'll uh, talk about uh, all those different qualities of, of leadership. But I'd love, again, to hear from you. If you have uh, any thoughts on, on leadership, who are some of your favorite leaders? I mean, uh, uh, the number to call is 866-451-1451. And just if anybody calls in, we'll, uh, we'll take their call. I'm trying to think. Just throughout history, you think of uh, people like uh, Eisenhower, uh, MacArthur, Patton, or some of our you know great military leaders uh, that uh, brought us through some of the most uh, difficult times in our history. Those, those, those guys, you know, people followed them for a reason. Uh, they perhaps had the, they had courage, they had the, the charisma, they had the the character. Uh, through years and years of not only study, but practicing uh, the art of leadership. Uh, who else? Uh, uh, Mar- Dr. Martin Luther King, uh, great leader, right? Uh, very charismatic, very well-spoken. Uh, he had a message that uh, spoke to not just the mind, but also more importantly, even to the heart. Uh, so Dr. King, you know, that uh, I have a dream speech. No one, no one forgets that speech. Once you hear it, you, you just listen to it over and over again. And I still pray, pray for that, uh, uh, those types of leaders that we need more of. We need people now more than ever in this, uh, we've, this uh, times in which we find ourselves living. We need good leaders. We need uh, uh, people with uh, courage, the courage to stand up for for what they believe in what we believe in um who else uh franklin delano roosevelt uh, after the uh, uh attack on pearl harbor that's a a speech that i never forget he when he says uh december 7th 1941 a date that which will live in infamy and he was more famous for also quoting the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. And we've been talking about fear a lot on this show. That's something uh, that a leader can be, I don't want to say afraid. Uh, courage is not the absence of fear, as they say. It's just doing doing what you have to do in the face of fear. So courage, leaders need to have that that kind of courage, that uh, is uh, uncommon at times. Like think of, uh, I think again, back to the, what I was talking about at the beginning of the show, when the first responders, the, 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 the police and the firemen, uh, looking up at that building, 
and saying to themselves, I have to, I have to get up there because there's people I need to, to help and waiting for that call from the commanding officers to say, okay, you go, uh, and I will, I'll be with you. And they, and up they went. Uh, I would, I would tend to say that there was a certain degree of fear, uh, in all of them. And yet they rose above that, were able to feel the fear and do it anyway. We, as we talked about in the previous show, to feel that fear, but do it anyway. And so I think of uh, fondly of a, a young fellow that I coached as a freshman in high school at Hudson Catholic. It was the only year I coached uh, football in 1989, prior to my uh, entering the seminary at Seton Hall. And I have a, had a player by the name of David uh, Lamagna. Some of you that are listeners here from uh, Hudson Catholic might might know of him. He was an EMT. I used to see him very frequently in the emergency room when I uh, years later, uh, and then subsequently uh, after he you know graduated high school, became an EMT. He was a great great person. Uh, just a kid with a lot of character, real natural leader, and apparently. He had been uh, applied to the Port Authority police and uh, nine months prior he became a, to 9-11, he had become a uh, Port Authority uh, police officer. And on that fateful day, of course, uh, everyone, it was all hands on deck. And uh, David was, I think, is stationed in Journal Square in Jersey City and everybody was called over to New York and talk about being a, uh, you know, a leader. He as I, the story was relayed to me that his commanding officer was injured uh, inside uh, one of the buildings. Uh, and he went into the building again, like running towards the danger when everyone else is, you know, uh, r running away. And uh, apparently took, uh, he pulled his commanding officer out of one of the towers that day and, uh, you know, he went back in and tried to help more people as a, a good uh, leader uh, would do. And and apparently uh, that was the last time anyone uh, saw him. So from a scri scriptural perspective, you know, G, you know, from a theological perspective, I'll say you know, uh, in the scripture, Jesus of Nazareth would say uh, greater love has no one than that, than that they lay down their life for than that they lay down their life for a friend. Greater love has no man or woman than to lay down their life for a friend. And uh, so we remember all of those uh, people uh, today, especially on the 13th of September, but uh, we never forget. We never forget them. So people like uh, David and all the different heroes uh, out there. So again, the number to call is 866-451-1451. Uh, We're on uh, Bold Brave TV, uh, Monday Morning Motivation with Jimmy Green, and we'll be back uh, on the other side of the break. The opiate epidemic has reached crisis levels, and with so many families affected by addiction, opiate-related drug overdoses, and death, the time is now to have a real constructive conversation about addiction that could lead to better prevention, treatment, and recovery. Alan Charles, author and keynote speaker on drug abuse and prevention, presents The Alan Charles Show. Alan brings a message of hope, sharing his unbelievable story of surviving a 24-year addiction to cocaine and highlights from his memoir, Walking Out the Other Side, an addict's journey from loneliness to life. His raw honesty and courageous heart breaks the stigma of addiction and offers a unique perspective into the mind of an addict. Join Alan each week as he brings his listeners to a true understanding of the grip of addiction. It is only with this understanding that we can begin to heal. The Alan Charles Show, Thursdays at 9 p.m. Eastern on the BBM Global Network. Have you ever felt like no one is listening or you're not getting the honest attention you deserve? Do you even know the kind of attention you want or need? You are not alone. Alice Aspen March is here to help. Thanks to Alice, through her epiphany and research over the word attention, there are solutions to the attention dilemma. 
Worldwide audiences have been enthralled and engaged for over 40 years with her visionary and pioneering observations. The kind of attention we get and give is vital to improving our lives and society. Alice and her weekly guests review game-changing insights for transforming and improving our understanding of attention, providing techniques for creating healthier and empowering behavior. Get a new perspective on a mainstream word. Tune into Why Our Attention Matters for fresh and thought-provoking conversations every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern on BoldBraveMedia.com and the TuneIn Radio app. Uh, good morning. Welcome back to Monday Morning Motivation with Jimmy Green. I'm your host, Jimmy Green. Uh, we're coming to you live on Bold Brave TV. And uh, today is September 13th. The number to call the show is 866-451-1451. We've been talking about uh, leadership and we've been talking about uh, some football. So I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, a little bit more about uh, a leadership uh, we've had a lot of great leaders in our time that have changed, the, you know, the course of, 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 of our history. Again, when, uh, like on Pearl Harbor, I, I, you might, you might guess history was my favorite subject, uh, in school. I, uh, I'm a big history buff. I had great history teachers, uh, throughout my life, particularly in, in high school. I had one brother, a Christian brother named Brother Tim Ahern, who uh, wasn't just in the history class. He was into the history class. Uh, he he just taught us about these uh, types of events. I mean, when he talked about the Civil War, I mean, he brought in uh, tangible things uh, that uh, we could see uh, that were from the Civil War, let's say, you know, or uh, just the way he spoke about history he he was inspiring and he was a leader too he's the baseball coach he was a a great teacher most of the teachers we had there uh, were great uh, in one way or another in their own right you know because they're passionate about it uh teaching in a parochial or a catholic school isn't something that uh, a lot of people always do for the money they do it because it's it's their calling it's their vocation and they try to turn uh us young young men because i went to an all, all boys high school at the time uh, young men into into uh, a good young boys into into good men, and that's what uh, we learned from people like uh, the brothers that we had there and the teachers that we had. Uh, they were leaders. They were uh, they had character. They had passion about uh, the, their subjects. And and again in in history, we learned about the different leaders. Like as I said, FDR famous for the only thing we have to fear is fear itself after we were our country was uh, attacked uh, in pearl harbor a whole nation is looking to one man they're looking to the the president uh, at the time to to say hey what are we what are we going to do we've been just been attacked and what what's your plan and he was very uh, poignant and very factual in saying that that we needed to not be afraid the thing we had to fear was the fa fear itself and that still resonates to today in my opinion where what we've just gone through all these past uh, two almost two years now there's a lot of, of of fear and i've been trying to tell my clients and my friends and family to put faith o faith over fear because uh, fear as les brown often that says one of my other favorite motivational speakers, you know, uh, fear kills hope. Fear kills dreams. Fear will aid you. Fear put people in the hospital. So, so we have to look at leaders like FDR and those types of individuals uh, over the years that uh, showed the way. Like I said earlier in the show, a leader is one who knows the way, who goes the way, who shows the way, and then goes the way. Another leader I think about uh, historically is uh, Winston Churchill. He had a very interesting uh, sense of humor. Uh, 
there was one funny story uh, where a woman once said to him, uh, "Sir, Sir Churchill, if I were if I were married to you, I'd give you poison poison to drink." And his immediate, well, maybe not so immediate, but his quip was, uh, "Madam, if I was married to you, I'd drink it." Uh, things like that he would he would say. Uh, what's another one that Winston Churchill uh, he would say about uh, let's say uh, freedom of speech? He'd say some people's idea of freedom of speech is that they could say whatever they want, uh, but if you say anything back, uh, that is an outrage. These are things that stick you know in my mind. These little little quotes because again with the attention deficits I've had in my life acronyms that I use a lot here on the show and, and quotes that I use, they, they stick in my mind. So uh, forgive me if I uh, use a lot of them, but uh, that's that's the way I learned from my coaches is to use these things to, to uh, my advantage. Uh, let's talk sports. Uh, Don Shula, I grew up a Dolphin fan. Uh, and uh, Don Shula was uh, one of the best coaches probably in the history of the uh, NFL. Uh, he had, I, I can't even remember now off the top of my head, how many, how many wins he had. And one of the things I've admired about him over the years as a theologian is that uh, it's my understanding that he was a daily mass attender, or what we call in, in the Catholic faith, a, a daily communicant. Uh, so he started his day out with God and, and went from there. And I've tried to emulate that uh, lately, especially over the last year and a half or so, try to start my day with some kind of uh, spirituality or some kind of prayer, uh, especially for me, it's, you know, mass like Don Shula. And I think when you take that one hour, perhaps in the beginning of a day, whenever it is, it doesn't have to be mass, it doesn't have to be the rosary like, like myself or, you know, whatever, but meditation or reading a good book or listening, particularly, I do this a lot, a lot. I, there's so much on YouTube now it's, as far as motivation is concerned. Some of these things I listen to over and over again, and they just can, can change your whole day. So, you know, you talk about leaders, they're out there, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, there's so much ability to get information today than than ever before. Uh, positive. So read. So what I'm saying is, leaders. You know, I think they 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 read positive books. They surround themselves with positive people. They have character. They have charisma. They have courage, even in the face of of fear. Uh, you know, what, what did John Wayne say, you know, uh, courage is uh, being scared to death, but saddling up, saddling up anyway. And so as we close out this segment uh, of the show, uh, again, I want to just repeat that quote. A leader is one who who knows the way, shows the way, goes the way. Uh, we'll be back, talk a little bit football to uh, wrap up the show and some uh, talk about some upcoming shows. The number to call is 866-451-1451. You've been watching Monday Morning Motivation with your host, Jimmy Green. And we're coming to you live on Bull Brave TV. And we'll be back on the other side of the break. What if there were a super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair? What if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against Parkinson's disease? Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to Easy sense.com and learn how with your help we can fight these horrific brain disorders that's easysense.com to learn more and help support the broderick foundation author 
radio show host and coach John M. Hawkins reveals strategies to help gain perspective, build confidence, find clarity, achieve goals. John M. Hawkins' new book, Coached to Greatness, unlock your full potential with limitless growth. Published by iUniverse. Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them, rediscover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Good morning. Welcome back to Monday Morning Motivation with Jimmy Green. I'm your host, Jimmy Green, coming to you live on Bold Brave TV. So we've come to the last segment of the show. Uh, nobody out there wants to call in today. What's going on? Everybody's at work, I guess. 866-451-1451 is the number to call. We were talking about leadership. As I said, uh, just one last quote on leadership. Uh, leadership is about empathy. It's about having the ability to relate and connect with people for the purpose of inspiring and empowering their lives. So as I said often on this show, it's about you. This is the WIIFY show, what's in it for you. So as we go along towards the end of the show, uh, I would like you to uh, look up my Facebook page, Monday Morning Motivation with Jimmy Green. If you have any ideas, suggestions about the show, comments, things I can do better, uh, just uh, let me know. Uh, as we close out, football, as I said, football is back. A tough weekend for the New York teams, of course. Uh, uh, the last night, uh, the Giants uh, suffered a defeat. I believe the Jets lost as well. My uh, favorite college team, Notre Dame, uh, squeaked by Toledo. Uh, what was it? 31-29, I heard, something like that. I didn't get to, to watch the game. Uh, but it's good to see people back out and, and about whatever it is, sports, nature. Just get out there, folks. Let's uh, let's live life. Let's uh, let's uh, go out there and make a difference. That's what this this program is all about. You know, good, bad or indifferent. You know, it ain't perfect. But I'll tell you what, as long as I, I have the time, uh, I'm going to try to do what I can for you. So just two last things before I go. Uh, the next one of the next shows, as I said, I'm going to do a review on a book called Happiness is an Inside Job. Think about that title. Happiness is an Inside Job by John Powell S.J. He's a, a Jesuit priest. He's uh, deceased now. But again, great book if you want to learn techniques uh, about uh, how to maintain your inner peace. Uh, and, and how to find hap true happiness in life. So happiness is an inside job. I highly recommend that book. It's about 160 pages. Uh, it'll change your life. Throughout the last 18 or so months, as I said, there's been a lot of fear, a lot of different things uh, going on in our world that uh, are, are, are not necessarily in our control. But uh, one of the things that I took uh, advantage of was to take a course called uh, Situational Awareness for, for Employees, you can see that there are six steps to behavioral analysis uh, by the founder, Yusuf Badu. Uh, he was my instructor. I did a lot of uh, research and reading on a situational awareness, threat detection, behavioral analysis, just things that we want to be aware of, things that uh, are going on around us just to be aware, not, not, in, a, not in a, I don't want to say paranoid way as a former counselor, but uh, so what I want to do is uh, review that with you as well. Six steps and basically the course is how to spot violence before it happens. Hopefully you never have to use this stuff, but I studied it for about eight months, became certified in it, and I'm going to give a, a, give a course on it, uh, offer an in-person course at some point. It's called Situational Awareness for Employees. Uh, you can find it at emergencedisrupt.com. Uh, and again, this book... Uh, by Father Michael, about Father Michael Judge. Uh, talked about him earlier. Uh, the book of, of Michael. Uh, he was a, a great leader on 9-11. That coincidentally the picture of him uh, after the, the crash of TWA uh, 800 years ago. 
Uh, he uh, was a great leader, great man. And uh, that's what we'll talk about in a, a future show. So that just about does it for today for Monday Morning Motivation. I'm your host, Jimmy Green. We're coming to you again live on Bold Brave uh, TV. And uh, we'll see you next week. And until then, as uh, my old coach, uh, Gresta, always says, don't count the days. Make the days count. This has been Monday Morning Motivation with your host, Jimmy Green. Tune in each week for a supercharged dose of inspiration, self-help advice, and personal growth strategies on the next episode of Monday Morning Motivation with Jimmy Green. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.